Hey guys, welcome to Bethel Online. My name is Jason, I'm one of the pastors here, and we're so glad you decided to make us a part of your weekend. No matter who you are, where you come from, we're so glad you're here. Our vision is to be a safe place for real people to encounter the real Jesus and experience real change. Our hope and our prayer is that no matter who you are or what you've been through, you know that you are loved and you are wanted here. We would love to get to know you better and help you connect with all that's going on. You can do this by going to our website at www.bethel.us or by downloading the Bethel app. You can find our app by searching Bethel Putco in your app store. Both online and in the app, you can fill out digital connection card. It only takes a minute and it'll help us know how to serve you better. Another way you can connect today is through giving. Your generosity at Bethel directly impacts God's mission to radically change people's lives in Putnam County and beyond. Through the ministries of Bethel and the many local and regional organizations we support, people are able to see the grace of God and how much He loves them. You can always give on our website at Bethel.us forward slash give or in the Bethel app. Thank you for partnering with us and making a difference. Well, thanks again for tuning in online today. Know that you are wanted and welcome here, and you are loved. I hope you all have a great day. Good morning and welcome to Bethel. Welcome to week two of our series, No Regrets. The title of my message this morning is It Takes Commitment. Last week we began a series and we began to talk about how much of our regret comes from settling. You know, we often start out life with big dreams, big hopes. Every young married couple looks at each other across uh, the, the church room or the marriage venue and they imagine a great marriage out ahead and they want and desire a great marriage out ahead. And every parent holds their child and thinks, I'm going to be the best parent I can possibly be. And, and they dream of a better day for their child and a better life for their child. Every leader looks at their organization and dreams of the best. And last week we talked about the importance of dreaming big and believing big and trusting big. We often though find ourselves somewhere in the middle of our relational world, our career world, our, our parenting world, and we find ourselves settling for good enough. We think, well, when it comes to my character, you know, I'm better than that guy. I, I'm, I'm a better person than that. And so that's like, isn't that like good enough? Or we, our workplace, we're like, well, I've, I've got a job. I get the check. I get my things done. But somewhere in the middle of it, we lose the purpose in it, the dream in it. We, we settle for something less. We we get 10 years into marriage and we look and we're like, yeah, she knows I'm coming home. Yeah, she knows I, I'm around. And, and we, we're tempted to stop chasing each other. Somewhere in the parenting role, like it gets hard. Like relationships and, and parenting and all of these things that we dream big about and we want to be great. There's a reason there has to be a dream behind them because they can be very difficult. And accomplishing these things can take great commitment. We have to fight this thing in us that I think has become an epidemic in our culture of dreaming the dream but not sweating the sweat that it takes. The most significant source of regret for many people is just where they settled. And oftentimes we settle and if we're honest with ourselves, it was because it got hard and we don't want to put in the work. You know, we don't want to work through our childhood stuff to come into our marriage healthier. We don't want to work through some of maybe the parenting from our past to learn how to parent differently. We don't want to put in the work to stay on the leading edge in our career. We don't want to limit ourselves. And so we settle by not putting in the extra work that it takes because it gets hard. I found in life oftentimes the things that separate those from whom accomplish things that they want to, and those that do is the willingness to put in the work. And you know, here's the deal. Having those things is hard. 
Not having them is hard. You just have to choose your version of hard. If you don't put the focus in in your career, it won't be meaningful. If you don't put the effort in in your marriage, your marriage will not be at the level of health that it could be. If you don't take the time with your children now to raise them up, to teach them well, you will have to address it later. And we often fool ourselves with thinking we can settle. The truth is, by settling, we settle in to certain failure. <coughs> you see, a life with no regrets requires determination. Last week, we talked about a story in 2 Kings in which King Joash was asked to, to hit some arrows on the ground before his people came up against a, a warring nation. And he did it very unenthusiastically. It was kind of like, okay, that's what I was instructed to do. I'm going to do what I was instructed to do, but no more. And the prophet Elisha, who was walking with him, gets very frustrated with him. There's a book written about this story by a guy named Erwin McManus, and he says this. It's clear that for Elisha, the fact that the king stopped striking the arrow was connected to his determination to receive the full measure of God's intention for him. That Elisha had somehow settled for enough, good enough, enough to survive, but not, to, not the commitment that it took to thrive. You see, that last line in that quote is to receive the full measure of God's intention for him. And I believe it should be our goal, it should be our intention as Christ followers to receive the full measure of God's intention for us. God's intention for us is good. God's plan for us is good. And that oftentimes receiving that is going to come down to putting in the work and effort. So many people are like, I'd love to hear from God. Have you been in God's word? I'd love, to, I'd, I'd love to hear from God. Are you praising God? I would love to experience some level of blessing in my life. Have you been serving others? Have you been stepping into the ways of God? And while I think too often we sit back and want God to do the work that he's calling us to do. I'm amazed at the times in which someone starts having a problem at home with their teenage child and they come to me and they say, well, can we do this? Can, can, can the church do this? And well, yes, of course, the church should be working in these programs. I promise you it'll never have the impact that parenting does. It can be hugely powerful. And the parents' support of those things is crucial. But by all means, we've got to put in the work. If you want to raise up children that see an authentic relationship in you, between you and God, and, and you want them to have a relationship with them and God, they need one to see. They need an example. If you want to have a great marriage and, and model a great marriage and show how God's love works with another person, it's going to mean serving them. It's going to mean being generous when it comes to the relationship with them, it takes time. One of the only things in the world that absolutely cannot be made efficient is relationships. They take what they take to be great. You can't fit someone into a half an hour block in your life and expect to fix all the problems in a relationship. In Proverbs chapter 18, verse 9, it talks about this laziness that can start to happen to us. It says, a lazy person is as bad as someone who destroys things. So often, we're like, the world is falling around around me, and yet we haven't bothered to say, well, you know what, the, the roof's been leaking for months, and I didn't address the little leak and now have major damage. All of a sudden, the marriage goes bad, but you, you haven't spent time together for four years. All of a sudden... The kid goes off the rails and you thought they were, you thought they were on autopilot. And you get around a conversation with the child and you find out you don't know them like you think you know them because you haven't spent the time with them. You see, settling for lesser than what God wants for our life is destructive. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 18 says it this way. I love it. Laziness leads to a sagging roof. Idleness leads to a leaky house. Meaning this, act when you see the sagging roof. 
Don't wait for the leaky house. If you see something and you're like, that's going to be a problem. If you see the red flag and you keep burying your head, eventually it's going to rear its head in your life, in your relationships, in a church. You want to have a great church? We want to have a great church. It's reaching our community. We have to be at a level of excellence. We have to be in a relationship with God. We have to be committed to doing the things. We want great kids programs. We need great kids volunteers. We need great teens programs. We need great teens volunteers. We, we need people who will show up and be committed and prioritize. We need these things. And, and so often we justify our laziness with excuses. Well, you know, I, I don't know. I, I'm not the best at communicating with a given age group or, or, you know, I'm busy. I'm so busy with my work that, you know, sometimes I, I just, I'm, I'm tired when I get home and I don't, I don't feel like entering into conversations that are exhausting. I don't feel like, and, and listen, we justify our laziness with excuses. We can excuse our way out of anything. I remember a season of my life where I was so busy working that I, like, I was never home for dinner. And all of a sudden I started wondering why when I came home, you know, like the kids didn't seem to even notice that I came home. And it was because I was so focusing on something of lesser importance, not putting in the work. And you know what? When you don't put in the work and the time comes for the work, you have a bigger thing to work through. Proverbs 22 verse 13 says, the lazy person claims there's a lion out there. If I go outside, I might be killed. And you know what? You're definitely going to die if you don't leave your house and be productive. You're definitely going to die if you don't move around. By, by being lazy, your body falls apart. I've seen it over and over and over again. When people retire and they don't do anything, they sit around, their body declines, their mind declines. When they step into this mindset of like, I'm going to do, and listen, I'm going to go on a rant. I feel like our society has learned to celebrate doing the least we can to get by. Rather than having an attitude of, if not me, then who? Rather than stepping into that, it's like hopefully someone else sees that and does it. And that's why educators in our culture are constantly left with the responsibility of parenting children who aren't being parented well at home. And that's why, that's why we have all of these systems set up taking responsibility for people who won't take responsibility the lazy person claims there's a lion out there. And yes, there may be a lion out there. But simply hiding from the lion will certainly lead you to devastation. It might prolong when the devastation happens. It might prolong the thing, but certainly it is unavoidable. We either, we either deal with the pain of discipline now or we deal with the regret, the pain of regret later. Benjamin Franklin said, he that is good for making excuses is seldom good at anything else. See, excuses ultimately turn into regrets. So how do we avoid falling into a life with a lot of regrets? You have to commit yourself. <laughs> Heinz Ketchup used to have this slogan, good things come to those who wait. And it was talking about the thickness of the ketchup and the quality of the ketchup and how used to it came in a jar in the old days and you had to shake it. And sometimes you had to hit it with, with like a knife or a fork to make it, the, the ketchup come out. It was thick, but when it did, it was good. And, and <clears throat> the point, the point in the story and the reason that I'm, that I'm using this is so often right. What we, the reward isn't right away for the commitment, but if you commit yourself long enough, you get to taste the goodness of your commitment. And so many of us, if it takes, and I just, I am a person who struggles to commit to things. Like I don't struggle once I commit to things, it's committing to things because I know I'm limited. I know there's only so much of me around. I don't like to be a promiser who doesn't, isn't a keeper of promises. And, and I'm slow, like, you know, Laura and I, we started dating. We got engaged in like a grand three years later, we finally got around to getting married. And, and the reason that it took so long is like, I knew when I did this, I was in this. Like, however it went and whatever it looked like, whatever the situation, whatever the circumstance, I was in this. 
Commitment. You know, ask like, well, how'd you, st-? you know, you, we've been together, I think, uh, 24 years. I probably should have known that a little faster, but I had to think about it a minute. But, but the reality is commitment is the only explanation. Commitment and God are the only explanation for how it's, we, it's been made to work. Commitment. And I know, listen, I know there were days when she looked at me and didn't feel like staying. I know that there were days when I looked at her and I was mad. And I didn't feel like having conversations. However, commitment is what it takes in parenting. Isn't it amazing when they're little, like they don't tell you what they want. They just think whatever you think is the best. They they just go where you take them. You sit them down and they're there when you come back and, and, and they, they, they're just, they're so, and then they get, they get older and they get their own mind and they maybe have the interest you have, or they don't have the interest that you have. And, and they think differently than you. And you're trying to get them to see what you want them to see. So they'll do what you want them to do. And they're thinking on their own. And you're like, ah, just be easier not to fight about it. It just be easier to check out uh, of this conversation and, and just let it go on autopilot. But if you check out on the conversation now, you, you're risking the relationship because, and you're, you're risking and you're settling for less. It's commitment. I'm convinced that the greatest moment in marriages, the greatest moment in relationships, the greatest moments in organizations that thrive are the ones we never see. They're the moment where someone doesn't feel like doing something that they need to do and they do it anyway. And I believe there's a reward for that. Vince Lombardi, the great Football coach said this, most people fail not because of a lack of desire, but because of a lack of commitment. When we have baby dedication Sunday at church, the week before parents get together and our children's director will speak with them and talk about parenting kids of faith and raising your kids to follow Jesus and and what it takes. And I've never had a parent in there that was like, look, I just want to keep them alive. I mean, we have these this moment where during baby dedication, they get up and they read their they're, this is what we hope our son in the next 18 years, our daughter, this is how we hope that our children thrive in the next 18 years. And I've never had anyone say, well, I hope that, you know, when they leave home, they at least go to therapy for what we've done. Uh, you know, that I, I just hope that we get them fed until they're grown and they're out. Like these, these are heartfelt desires that people have for their children. And yet the reality is that they're free, that these children have free will and they can make their own decisions. But for 18 years, it takes a major commitment to meet the needs, the love needs of the kid, to discipline the child, to raise them, to protect them from themselves and to others, to get to the point that we dream of. And so often the end result is maybe not what the desire was. Most people have a desire to do well and thrive but many lack the commitment to do so. There's a story in the book of Nehemiah, and I'm probably going to talk about the story of Nehemiah a lot over the next couple years. It's one of my favorite stories. Nehemiah is burdened with a fallen wall around his homeland, and he's He's away and his country is susceptible. His people are susceptible to outside invaders because of this wall. And God places it on his heart and he's able to go to to the king who he serves under and ask him to go repair it. The king allows him to. Nehemiah 4.21 says this, We worked early and late from sunrise to sunset. During this time, none of us, not I, nor my relatives, nor my servants, nor the guards who were with me, ever took off our clothes. We carried our weapons with us at all times, even when we went for water. They stayed committed to the vision that God had given them. He stayed committed. There was even a time in which leaders from other places came wanting to talk to him about what was going on, and he refused to meet with them. I love it. It's probably my favorite quote, and it's one that I have to remind myself when it comes to the things I'm committed to in life. When distractions come my way, when temptations to to back off come my way, when I'm tempted to take the lazy route, I remember this thing that Nehemiah said to these men who came to him to try to draw him down to converse with them about what was going on. He says, I am doing an important work and I cannot come down. That's commitment. 
Nehemiah talks about the people who came and tried to discourage them. He said, they were trying to intimidate us, imagining that they could discourage us and stop the work. So I continued the work with even greater determination. Ken Blanchard says this, there's a difference between interest and commitment. When you're interested in something, you do it only when it's convenient. When you're committed to something, you accept no excuses, only results. You see, determination ensures your dream becomes a reality. So many people want the moment at the end where things went well. We want the moment where the kids set off into a great life with a great future, relationally healthy, emotionally healthy, a deep relationship with God. And on that day, very few people will talk about the rough spots. They'll talk about the victory, but the victory was often won in the determination not to give up. Abraham Lincoln said this, commitment is what transforms a promise into reality. <clears throat> are you committed? What are you committed to? And how can you be disciplined about living out that commitment? As a part of Bethel, I'm just going to ask you, I, I will tell you, I unapologetically believe the work that we're doing in this church is one of the most important things that you can invest your life in beyond your family, your relationship with God, and, and I believe wholeheartedly in what we're doing. We're taking steps forward right now in, a way, in, in, a, in big ways. We're committing out toward the future to pay a price now that we may not see a return for for generations. Are, are you committed to it? Are you committed to maintain your relationship with Jesus and then to live with the commitment of the gods of the heaven and the earth as you carry forward the relationships in your life? Are you settling? Because see, we pay the price of discipline now or the pain of regret later. Live with no regrets. Figure out what's worth being committed to and do it. Love you, Bethel. Have a great week. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Are you ready to take your next step? We would love to hear from you. You can send an email to hello at Bethel.us. You can send us a message on Facebook, or you can let us know in the Bethel app. And speaking of the Bethel app, take a moment, if you haven't already, to go to your app store and search Bethel Putco to download our app. There's all kinds of great resources in the app. You can listen to messages. You can view the messages from Sunday morning. And you can also fill out a digital connect card. You can do that today and each week to let us know that you're tuning in. You can also find some great information about our Bethel Kids Ministry and our Be The One Student Ministries. Also in the app, you can give. It's one of three ways you can give. With online giving at Bethel.us slash give in our app, Bethel Putco, or through text. Hey, thanks again for joining us. We hope you have a great day and know that you are loved.